Today we're talking about UC Berkeley canceling uh, Ann Coulter. Um, what the heck is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. So, Keep Call going. of Duty World War II. Hey. Bill Nye talks sex. Abacus of sex. Did you see Bill Nye's new series on Netflix? That's exactly what we're talking about, Bro. my friend. Bro. And Fast 8. Fate. Fate. Of the 8. Fate of the Furious. I'm Saron Brown. And now Marin Mamouyak. This is Culture versus Christianity. And y'all know what time it is. Mm-hmm. Run the bumper. So, welcome again to Culture and Christianity, um, and uh, we start off the show with a segment called Tell Me Something Good. Uh, so, Ron, tell me, tell me something good about your life here. Well, you know, it's a good time. Just came back from Miami. Experienced Miami a different way. I haven't been to Miami, like, it's how I, like, it's, as in my faith as I am now. Okay. And the age I am now, it was different. Yeah? It's completely different. Miami's like a Spanish Sin City down there, man. I'm Bro, talking. I'm talking I took so much Ubers and all they knew was here? I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they just and they got well, me there, safe and sound. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's you gotta learn Spanish. English is a second language down in Miami. Bro. Um so what'd you do in Miami? Nothing, you know. Someone's graduation, just went out there, celebrated with them. That's yeah. all. Good time. Friends, yeah, keep them close. Don't let them go. Yeah, did you uh, did you do any uh, clubbing, partying, all that stuff? A little bit. Good. Okay. Cool. I I mean I I used to be that way, and um, you know when I was yeah uh, pre Christ, kind of new Christ. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I was <clears throat> I, I was I was in that mode of life, and it, I just find it so weird now that like I don't. I don't like that scene anymore. So. Yeah, it wasn't the best. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't the best. The music was like, I left the club down. Like, Hello? <laughs> Hello? Is that you? All your cilia have been laid to rest Yo. because of the, the bass in there. Too much bass. Yeah, man. Ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't know. I used to be I used to be a, a club rat. And so, and now I don't want to, I don't even, I don't even like being there anymore. It's just, I don't know why. I don't know why. So, um, I guess I could go, but... Just not my thing anymore. Nope. So, yeah. It was not. Yeah. Um, let's see. T- if I got something fun good, to be with the people though, the people I was with, that oh, was yeah. that, that was the best part. Yeah, I think I think you could be with those people anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, that's yep. exactly right. And uh, just be doing anything, be hanging out, drinking something, wine or something. You know what I mean? Um, but eating couscous. Eating couscous out of a coconut mm. with a flower in your hair. That fillet magnum. Mm, fillet magnum, champagne. What? It's Champagne. Champagne. Okay. Yeah, there's right. an Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. What do you got good to say? What's going on with you, man? Um, you know, everything's good. Uh, you know what's really good? I've recently started discipling a whole like three people. All At once? In one one shot. Yeah. They're all we all had our first meeting today. So I spent uh, like Who are these people. I spent five hours today in five different meetings. And three of them were discipleship meetings. Let us love one another. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing for me is um is discipleship. I really I really I really enjoy pouring into the next generation. Honestly, I do. Um, so we've got a new segment. Mm-hmm. It's called "Am I Bugging Or?" So oh God. I'm gonna start off this segment right. Am mm-hmm. I bugging or? And and then it's basically a segment that. Asked if it's okay. Can we have to like a like a, a fly fly in? Am I bugging or and then like right a splat? here? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, so it's it's where if you're if it's okay to feel a certain way mm-hmm. about a certain thing in culture or whatever. So okay. here's here's the first one. Um, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's Nordstrom is selling a four hundred and twenty five dollar pair of pants. I've seen this foolishness. It's the Barracuda destroyed straight leg jeans. I'm, I'm Barracuda? Showing it right now. Why? Is it Barracuda blood? <laughs> Bro, is that Barracuda blood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I'm not sure about it, but it's you guys essentially. Gotta see it. We're gonna put it like right there. Yeah, it's like essentially a distressed <laughs> jean, um, and I guess it's comfortable. And it says classic straight cut from knee to ankle. Um, I'm not sure if this is real blood, or I'm, I'm guessing. I'm hoping it's not. They were selling jeans that had real mud on them. Really? Yeah. Who was selling that? Nordstrom. Really? And they're also selling like a distressed shoe that had real duct tape and really falling apart. So like they they take take actual like three dollar duct tape and they put it on it and they sell it for a lot of money. You know, am I bugging or is like fashion 
going crazy places right now that I don't think is fashion anymore. You don't think it's fashion anymore? I don't. I don't think it's fashion anymore. Not do you, when. Do you consider yourself fashionable? No. Uh, no. I consider myself neat. Right. Like. You wear flip flops everywhere. Safe. That's what I consider myself. My fashion style, if I were to describe it in one word, safe. Comfortable. That's my fashion I style. I like pushing the boundaries sometimes. At least what I think on the boundaries <laughs> myself. <laughs> would you would you wear would you wear duct tape on your shoe? Like No. You, you you wouldn't buy that. I like my shoes a lot. I have a lot of them. Yeah, but like thirty one. Say Yeezy is coming Yeezy. around coming around with duct tape on his on the bottom of his shoe and it says, Check this out, Saran. Pick up my new shoe. No. Duct tape season four. That's dumb. What I mean, fashion is expression of yourself in clothes. Yeah, and I wouldn't express myself that way. <laughs> you get to express yourself. Yeah. You get to pick if you want to buy that or not. I'm not going to do that. So is this foolishness? Is this is this? Am I am I? Am I think you. He can legitimately have gone fishing, right? Got snagged, snagged a couple of of uh, hooks in his pants and cut some fish on there as well yeah. and get that same look that he's about that whoever is about <laughs> to pay $425 for and you get the the authentic smell. Do you wear for free? <laughs> do you wear? Do you wear like ripped up pants and stuff like that? Do you wear No, that I have stuff? like bleached pants. I haven't worn those in a while. Like purposely bleached or Yeah, I bleached them myself. Oh, you bleached them yourself. You see me in them. 4th of July. Home bleached. Home bleached. Yeah, pants. they look amazing. Like Clorox bleach, they look amazing. Okay, I I mean I don't know. I, I mean I try to stay away from that kind of stuff. I am not I'm not fashion forward in that sense, but I appreciate other people who are. Uh, it's just that this pair of jeans seems too seems too much. Mm-hmm. It's too much. It looks like I just it looks like I just rubbed it in dirt. You know what I mean? And I patched together some old pieces piece, some old jeans and stuff. Hey bro, it's the Barracuda. Yeah, it looks like it got a one star rating too. Ooh, so but that looks like five. Or like no, like one five star rating. Yeah, that's you're right. So it's a five star rating, but it's only got one person who bought it and rated it. What did they? Can stars. you read the comment? Awesome destroyed jeans. These jeans are so comfortable. Wearing abstract art has been ch- has changed my life for the better. Before I used to wear just regular blue jeans, but now people stop and ask me what I've been up to and why my pants are so dirty if I've been working outdoors all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you should see their faces when I explain to them that I haven't been working at all. But the jeans came like this. They are perplexed and amazed that you those wonderful jeans that you, that come destroyed. I would recommend this to anyone. So people are coming up to this dude and saying. Where you've been working, like it looks like he's been working like crazy all day. That's so. ridiculous. Hey, so if you want to, you know, put off the image that you are a hard-working man who works with his hands in the Go dirt, work. or you could buy the Nordstrom Barracudas for four hundred twenty-five dollars. And if look I see like you in that. those, I roast you in the street <laughs> instantaneously. Instantaneously. So, so I'm gonna say I'm not bugging on that one. Um, so here's our next segment today. Um, do you know who Ann Coulter is? Mm-mm. So there's this, there's a, she's a far right public Wait. figure. She's a f- very conservative. Is that the, the teacher chick? Uh, not sure if you're, okay, that's an accurate description, description of her, but I don't know if you've <laughs> heard of, chick. uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not I'm sure so... if you, uh, do you know who Ben Shapiro is and Milo Yiannopoulos? Okay. Okay. So she rolls in that crew. She's far right, conservative, outspoken person, like very okay. public figure and what is have you have you followed what's happening on UC Berkeley? No. UC Berkeley has had tons of protests, Trump anti-Trump protesters fighting like legit like explosions. I'm not saying like bombs. Is that the protest like, where like a whole bunch of like feminist protests? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the guy ran up there and pulled out his penis and they beat him up. Yeah, yeah. I think I think one of those. I'm not sure about <laughs> exactly that. Uh, like but, you, my friend, are a certified <laughs> idiot. I'm not sure exactly that. But there are tons of protests in UC Berkeley. And UC Berkeley is, I think, for the most part, majority left, left wing, very liberal thought mm-hmm. and the, uh, theology. Or I feel theory. like a lot of colleges Sorry. are like that. Yeah, yeah. They're very, very liberal. Maybe some others. You go into sure. college, like a little, you know, like a, an oyster with a little piece of dirt in its mouth. Right. And college tries to shape you yeah. and mold you into that pearl. That's why it's so And important. throughout those chain, throughout college, you go through so much. Yeah. yeah. Some people don't end up a pearl. Some people still remain a little grain of sand. Yeah, and, and that's why it's so important to pearl. choose. <laughs> <laughs> what those, are the, those are the black sheep, man. <laughs> those people are weird. <laughs> <laughs> They're weird. 
the so rare it, ones. So it depends on how what college you pick because that's what shapes your belief because that's uh, the institution has certain biases and stuff. So liberal universities going to an HBCU changed my life. Oh yeah, Bro. how so? For the better, or for worse. I went from I came from like Port, Port St. Lucie is like a very white. Mm-hmm. Where white place going there? It was ridiculous. Yeah, how so? How is it different? I can't even begin to explain. Like people, no, for no, for for us who don't know, is is that a black college, a white college? HBCU is a historically black college or university. Okay, okay. So like Bethune Cookman. And so you're leaving a white context in Port St. Lucie to mm-hmm. go to a black context. to be surrounded by black people all the time, twenty four seven. Got you. And it's so. Crazy. Uh, how did that shape? Where the, the white people are the minority, <laughs> like in the like in the school. Oh, it's a white guy. <laughs> we <laughs> found wa- him. He was walking along. Come here, brother. <laughs> it's crazy. It's uh, and, crazy. And so, how does that? How did that shape your view? And especially when coming back to a white context, people are just so more like soulful and like. You don't think that shaped your view? Yeah, but people are a lot more Ooh. soulful and like. Okay. So I don't know. They're just so more egocentric. I don't even know how to explain. This is a, a different type of world. Is it a diff- Is there Food, a different spirituality? Black people, I don't know. I just feel like we're way more spiritual. This really? is a lot, huh? So you think there's a difference in spirituality in the black community and the white community? In the black college, yes. Okay. Church was like an open thing. Really? Yeah, there was a church that like the ch- the students had a church that they ran on campus. Huh. Interesting. I don't know if that's a thing that happens in a lot of colleges. I wouldn't imagine, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. And so, what is it like? What do you think is a, a white community, a white context or college? I don't know. Yeah, it, I, I, don't I know. I went to Indian River State University, and mm-hmm. um, there was really no big uh, spiritual presence mm-hmm. on, on campus, actually. I don't think there is still. I know there's I, one. It's not that there's a spiritual presence. It's just like... You know that like most of the the people here, like I don't know, it's like most black people come from church. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I felt. Like, I hey, don't be playing with God. Like, you know, someone <laughs> who wouldn't even explain to say something like that yeah. will say something like that. It's just weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, in this particular uh, situation, UC Berkeley uh, canceled Ann Coulter, this right figure. Good. Um, uh, in in speech, so the, they're like that. Well, and, then that denies her right of free speech. And they're they're yeah. So they're a liberal campus with a conservative person, and there's mm-hmm. people who want to hear her. Um, and so through a series of events, um, like the protests and stuff, it makes it relatively dangerous. Anyway, they re- they changed their mind. They rescheduled her during a the school's reading break. And she oh, was, and they interrupted her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they interrupted her. Well, this was, I think this was Milo Yiannopoulos. She hasn't spoken yet. This hasn't oh. happened yet. Milo Yiannopoulos, they, they interrupted him and they shut him down. He was a far right and they interrupted him and they shut him down. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's, and that's the left interrupting and, and almost stifling his uh, freedom of speech. Yeah. Now, what do you think about that? Is that right? Is I that feel wrong? like everyone is entitled to their freedom of speech. Right. Their opinion might be horrible, mm-hmm. but... That's their right to have an horrible it's, it's, opinion. It's almost like denying someone their constitutional right. Yeah. And like once you, do, once you deny that, like, what else are you denying? I don't think it's fair. You know, if they want to be... If they want to be... If you want to be liberal, you want to be far right, however you want to be, just, you know, some people are crazy, accept it, or leave it. <laughs> So how as a Christian do you, how do you, how do you deal, with, if you're a student at UC Berkeley and a Christian and you either have left or right views um, or mixture of both, uh, how would you respond? Would you? I think people try to mix Christianity and politi- politics way too much. Yeah? Is it, is it, is it too much of a, huh? is it too much of a mixture? Is there? Well, like, even like when, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but like when the Mayflower first came to America... Right, Mm -hmm. and they're writing the Mayflower Compact. The first thing that was on there was us before the presence of God. Yeah, like like since the very beginning, people always put God first, and then it says King George, and then they have like their guidelines and whatever it is. Right, right. And people do this thing where they just keep trying to like mix God into politics, and I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I think I don't it, think that's fair to God. I think it happens too much, and then people people and use then it. and then when you don't take their side, they're like, 
They you make it seem devil. like it's unchristian. Yeah, yeah the devil. Yeah, so I don't think that's I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I think it happens too much, especially with people this use that to race. play. People use your your religion to play on their play on their agendas as like an authority, a, yeah. like an authority figure. Like Jesus would have been a liberal. Jesus would have been a conservative. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's just uh, I think Jesus had certain had a, was above politics. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I think he was above that. I think he was he had his own. He wasn't a political figure, mm-hmm. and people wanted to make him out to be a political figure. They're like, "You should rebel and overtake Caesar and all that stuff." And he wasn't. He wasn't really about that. And um, I think what he does is he crosses political barriers. I think actually there's some things of the conservative um, thought that he that is Christian, but some things of the conservative thought aren't Christian. Mm-hmm. But some things of the liberal thought are, and some things aren't. Like. For example, the care for uh, the orphan and the less fortunate mm-hmm. is more liberal in thought. And I think Christ speaks to that, you know, care for the widow and the orphan. But also Christ speaks to other conservative thoughts as well. And so I think is he's just above what is now left and right, um, which is why hopefully um, there will be, I think, there should be a rise of like independent thought. There's, there's too much. It's too far and too far left and too far right for me right now. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't. As a millennial Christian, I can't fully support one or the other because I'm so torn between some of these uh, aspects here. I don't know if I can say that. Really? I can fully not support somebody. Not support somebody, but uh, I mean a, a but fully system support? of thought, like either liberal or Christian, or uh, a liberal or conservative. See, that's the thing. Like People try to make you either left. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or you're either right. Yeah. But most people are like a little bit of this. That's what I'm saying. Like a that's, little bit of that. that's what I am. Like my history teacher was saying one time a long time ago, a while ago, is that like like when America was made, mm-hmm. right? And we developed this this system of government. Yeah. There's one thing that developed from there and to this day we can't get rid of, and it's the party system. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and we cannot get rid of it. And it is it is horrible some- because no one is ever it's like it's like when I was younger and I was a child I was like ew beer is disgusting and then I grow up and it's like mm, you know beer's not too bad and now it's like oh beer's delicious <laughs> like but when but when you're like when you pick a side you have to be that yeah forever <laughs> yeah there is no bending so do you feel like you're in the middle uh, or do you feel like I feel like I'm like a little bit of this yeah and a little bit of that yeah yeah but people, people don't want you to be a little bit. No, they want you to be like this. No, and there's that, yeah, and they're strong too about it. There's, that, we we were driving down. Even liberals, even them who are like you know they have like that little loose contextual understanding of what the Constitution says. Yeah. Even even then. Yeah. Because some I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Well, um, let's keep moving on to uh, you know. Worn out video game news. Uh, Call of Duty is out with a new trailer. Uh, Call of Duty World War Two. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but they... I have. I haven't watched the trailer yet. Okay. But what they were saying was like, do we really need another World War Two game? Uh, yeah, for real, for real. Like, is is there anything else that we can possibly get? Yeah. And then they made this whole thing. What about like? An Afghan, <laughs> like an Iraq game, yeah. and it was like, no, it's way too soon. Yeah. yeah, way too soon to have something like that. Yeah, it's 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 so it's it's interesting because they went from Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, mm-hmm. Modern Warfare Two, Modern Warfare Three, like Infinity Warfare. But they say one more World, World War Two is going to be crazy. Yeah, like they're saying your health won't even regenerate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like they're trying to make it as realistic as possible. Like, crazy. blood will shoot out the control. To me, it sounds like uh, it's turning into Battlefield. Yeah, maybe. Health will regenerate. It's gonna be. They say that they're gonna change the whole mechanics of the game. Battlefield is like more just like open area, though. I think Call of Duty is more FPS focused. The reason Battlefield is more open area because you have all those machines to cover that space. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I. What do you think? Um, what do you think are, and this is probably a popular question, what do you think are the impact or influence of video games in someone's worldview? So if you say you play a lot of Call of Duty, are they more apt to be more violent? No, do you I don't think? believe that. Um, no. If they play, I don't know. No. No! 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 Uh, uh, like a 10-year-old who plays call, uh, Grand Theft Auto. That's fine. Really? If the parents are okay with it, and you're letting them know, like, this is this. No, I wouldn't have my 10-year-old play that game. Anymore. Play Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. 
F this, F this, go get this stripper, you know what I mean? Yeah, but while you're not, while they're not doing that in your home where you can counsel them, yeah, they're hearing all of that outside. I understand that, but I don't think the solution is to dive them deeper into all of that. I'm not diving them into anything. If they say, hey, I want to play Grand Theft Auto, I'm going to be like, are you sure this is what you want to play? Blah, 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 give my reasons, uh-huh. right? If not, then all right, there you go, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that because I don't think... The solution, just because they hear it outside and I don't have any control, I don't mm-hmm. think the solution is to bring it inside. But this, but look, listen to this now. You don't give him Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He game shares with his friend who has it. Okay. And now he's playing it behind your back without any guidance. So just because he can try to find a, a workaround. He will. It, it's, 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 think of all the times you as a child was denied something. Yeah, yeah. And you found that workaround. It, it was harder when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we didn't have like internet like the way we did. And you thought you were slick. You thought, <laughs> he's going to get his birthday money, and he's going to put it aside, and he's going to download a DLC. Yeah, yeah. Or He's going to play it. Or you just protect him from it. How? Just, how? just don't, give him, don't give him that Grand Theft Auto. I know I wouldn't. That, I'm, I'm, I might be more right conservative on that one. But there, you, seriously, you would give... Hey, go ahead and shoot that guy in the head. Like, the, go steal this stripper the, and the put, her, put her in the trunk of your car. See, yeah, you're, you sound like one of those people now. Like, I'm serious. The video games, I don't necessarily think they're teaching that. But what, what is like the exposure of doing Is there any effect? It's like me playing Overwatch. I'm not going to turn into a, 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 a tracer and zip around <laughs> everywhere and shoot people and then rewind time. I understand you. Who is a grown man who's developed mentally, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. gone through those stages. But even as a child, let's see, what did I play I'm as a child? I'm saying a 10-year-old. Crash Bandicoot. Do you think you could jump on a box and things will fly out? No, but I think if I played Assassin's Creed, I'd be walking around like a little assassin. Let's see. What, 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 was, what was the thing back then? I know that. Ooh, GoldenEye, Nintendo 64. Yeah, I wanted to be a spy. Yeah, but did you go around shooting people? No, but I went Yeah, but pre- you played that game. I went around pretending to shoot people. But you didn't shoot anyone. No, you're right. Like, you can't say, like, yeah. no matter what happens, even with the video game, yeah. how you actually raise your child will uh-huh. always outweigh whatever the video game is I doing. understand that. But let, then let's take it to the next extreme. What if I just take them to a uh, rated R movie? What do you mean? But I, I take a, that's a, Grand Theft Auto is a rated M game. Mm-hmm. What if I take them to a rated R movie? And I, don't, I, w- I don't think I would take my child to a rated R movie. Why? Because I don't think children have an interest in things like that. Well, what? okay, what if he did? What if he had an interest? Okay, give me an example. What movie? I don't know. What's a recent rated R movie? I, I, I honestly, I can't think of one right now. I want to play a game. Okay, Saw. Saw. Saw? What about it? Saw. Would you take... If your no kid, child would watch that. If you... If you're, you, you no say, child would watch that all the way through. You can't say that just like... You know, just... What if a, so, a kid wanted to? So what do you think is going to happen? They're going to watch that movie and now they're going to going to want to kill people? So what do you think is going to happen? They're going to watch that movie and it's not going to affect them at all? I mean... I'm not, I'm not protecting them that to be a killer. I'm protecting them from all the uh, impressions that it could be. I guess. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that it trains them to be the person in the middle, but there are, like, other implications that... I mean, like, just kind of... They, they don't need that kind of brain developmentally... You know, they don't need that kind of impression on them developmentally. I, feel I don't like think. Saw is an extreme. Okay, fine. I mean, like, like I thought we were talking about like a radar there, there movie. Like, Saw is an extreme. There's like bro. six Saws. Though. John Wick. Okay, John. I've never seen it. I've never seen it, so I can't say. But The Matrix. Those are rated R. Those are rated R. The Matrix are rated. How could you? I don't. I don't know what kind of person that would leave on the child confused. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I don't how know. you would feel. I just. I. I don't know. I don't, maybe I should pull up like science and stuff like that. I don't know. Like statistical. I don't think video games it. like that affect children or movies. Would you oh, say music? I'm going to tell you what my child would play. Uh-huh. Forza. <laughs> He'll be amazing at it. Uh, let's move on to our next segment here. Uh, Bill Nye has a new series on Netflix. Bill Nye Saves the World. Mm-hmm. Uh, a far cry from what Bill Nye used to be. Abacus of sex. Um, I don't know if you've heard this before, but have you seen Have you seen anything from Bill Nye? I haven't right watched now? any of them yet. Well, he has this segment on sex. So this is what we're going to talk about. Okay. Uh, and there's this whole gender, um, gen- the gender wars, I guess we'll, we'll call it. And he mm-hmm. says that uh, sex is on a spectrum. Mm-hmm. And he describes it in four different ways. He goes from the bottom to the top. Sex is on a spectrum, and then the next one is gender, and gender is on a spectrum. 
Then he says, attraction is above that. And attraction is what basically you're attracted to, right? What you're sexually attracted to. And that's on a spectrum. And expression is on a spectrum. And here's how he defines it. That your sex, you could be either male or female. Um, and that there's like fish that can change their sexual organs, I guess. Um, yeah. And so that sex is on a spectrum for Don't humans seahorses as well. do that? Not sure. I am don't. Okay. I'm not a you know scientist or whatever. Uh, and then he says above that is gender, and your gender can be on a spectrum. It used to be male and female, but now it could be like, you know, the cis gender, or you know, a male can identify as a female, or a female can identify as a male. Um, and then above that is I attraction. Mm -hmm. You could be attracted to pansexual. You could be attracted to all things, or regardless of gender. Uh, asexual, not attracted to anything. Mm -hmm. Bisexual, you know, that is, right? Um, you know, lesbian, gay, that whole thing. And then expression, you could express yourself as a male, express yourself as a female, express yourself as, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm trying to state it as matter of factly as possible, but you could express yourself in other ways as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that as a uh, Christian male? So, where do you think you fall in all these spectrums? Uh, I, I feel like it's not a spectrum. I feel like the first two are a spectrum, or not a spectrum. Gender and sex. I don't, well, I don't, wait, he said that your gender could be on a spectrum? Yeah, that's what, yeah, he said your as gender. A, as, as a human, or as a homo sapien, how can your gender be on a spectrum? This is, how can you be either male or female? He says that your sex. Your is, sex, how can your sex be on a. Your, your sex, your sex are your organs. And, and your gender is what you identify as. Well, sex is biological. Gender is how you identify yourself and your experience. Well, there was this one study where there was a set of twins, right? Yeah. And they were both given, um, uh, they were for, uh, not fraternal twins, twin twins, regular mm -hmm. twins. And they were both given, uh, what's the snippety thing? What are you talking about? The penis thingy? Circumcision? So they're both circumcised. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> they're both circumcised. This one of them was a botched. Thing? One of them was a botched circumcision. What are you trying to do? So they said to the mom, "We can fix it, so it'll basically feel like it was always a. It'll be, it'll be a girl." Oh, they and she did that. Oh, they chopped the boy's penis off on accident. They, it was a botched circumcision. So they chopped the whole thing off and fixed it so it looked like a vagina. And he lived his whole life. Thoroughly confused. Like, he, like, they raised him as a girl. They, all this stuff as a girl. They gave him hormones and stuff like that. And he always felt like, I am a man. Like, I don't understand. Like, Who so he was this? really this confused. Is this, this is, is real. This is real. And then their parents finally told him. And he was like, oh, my gosh. Everything makes, so, makes sense. So, I don't understand how the spectrum works. I don't know. I don't know. I I I I I I feel like I identify as a what is it like a heterosexual male? That, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the term is cis male. I'm not sure. What does that mean? It means that you are you identify with the the sex you were born with. You as a gender, your gender matches the sex you were born with. This is a this is a new term for me. I just learned it from Bill Nye, the Save the World guy. I was offended when you said I'm a cis gender. I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> like, I'm not sure if that's a, it's like, it's C I. Well, you're talking too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah. That was crazy. And it's so weird because, like, he had something back in the day when he was building out the science guy and saying, like, mm -hmm. you have, your mom has two, two X chromosomes and your dad has an X and a Y, mm -hmm. and you're, and, each each parent can give you one chromosome, and that's what you end up with. If your dad gives you your Y, then you're a you're a boy. If your dad gives you an X, then you're a girl, because your mom only has to give you an X, right? And so if you end up X Y, you're a boy. If you end up X X, you're a girl, right? Yeah. And so that and he said that that is your gender, that is your sex. This was in like 1990s when he was Bill Nye the Science Guy, and and now he's like this weird creepy guy. And I don't know about like I'm not trying to hit on like harp on him, but he's like. He's like, he reminds me of um, Bob Saget. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like he used to be this wholesome childhood figure, like this father figure. Mm -hmm. But then, like, now he's acting out the way he wants to. And now he's like this, like, I feel he's a little weird and dirty man. Like, I don't Abacus of sex. I don't know. Like, that's the, that's the impression I get. Mm hmm Either way. This is, this is some people's childhood you're talking about I'm right saying. Now. This is my childhood I'm talking about. Bill Nye was like, I love this dude. He was, uh, 
I learned from him, sixth grade, science class. I watched this fool, man. This guy was it. But now I'm looking at him and I'm just like, dude, this is, you're gone. You're going a little crazy here. I don't know. So do you think as a Christian, mm-hmm. do we have a sexual spectrum that we live on? How do you reconcile this with um, the Bible? Um, and then maybe a follow-up. How do we talk to people? See, this is my thing. I don't feel like I can talk on this topic. Okay. Because I only identify as one way. Yeah, you identify as a man. You know what I'm saying? Heterosexual. Like, I don't understand that turmoil that other people are going through. Yeah. Would you want to know more about Hell this? no. Really? <laughs> Why? No. Why? You mean, like, like personally? Like, go through that? No, 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 no. Like, oh, because no. <laughs> some people, yo, I've seen, like, people be really confused. No, I'm saying, like, would you want to know more about this topic so that you could talk to people? But see, this, this, this goes back to a conversation we were having a long time ago, not on the podcast. Mm-hmm. It's, like, listening versus relating. Yeah. This is, like, this is something that if someone was to talk to me about this, I can never relate to this. Yeah. I can listen. Yeah. I can listen and try to understand what you're going through. Listen and understand. Yeah. But I can never relate. Yeah. It what And I feel like that's where a lot of like a lot of people like think like that's where the line is drawn and then they're like you're homophobic. No, I can't relate to this. <laughs> I under I comp- I promise I'm listening and I want to understand. I feel no type of ways towards you. I just Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just you lack the ability. I cannot relate to this. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, and, and I don't know, man. That's a shame because there are people who are actually, who are like really struggling with this. I know. know. Like, I know. It's a core deep issue. It's like them coming and asking for advice. Like, so what should I do? Not be, you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But then that's all I can, that's all I can say. I can't. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Well. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot, man. I, I, I feel for our, uh, Anyone out there who is um, really struggling with this sexual identity and stuff like that? Um, I feel like I think TV Christ- plays a role in that. How? Like, like when I was a child, there wasn't that much like, like same sex like relationships and stuff, and yeah. it's everywhere now. Yeah, it's oh, it's everywhere. Like every TV show. Oh, seriously. Didn't Disney Channel just have like their first same sex couple kiss on an animated show. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's a big one. It's crazy. Big steps, man. Big steps. Yeah, I mean, I I feel bad. I I, I wish I could relate more. And I think the church should... What's the church's role in the gender roles? In the gender war, I should say. Bring them into the church and give them the word. What if they don't want to be in the church? Huh? Well, a lot of them find themselves in the church and then they ran away. Yeah. So the church's job is to not run them away. Yeah. Come just as you are. Would you... Yeah, I, I just... It's so it's so hard because once you bring them to the church, now you're, now you have like, someone who doesn't think like the rest of the church. Mm-hmm. And um, I would love that honestly. I would love as many people as that possible. As if you come into the, you know, the church and you find like it's a place where you could feel comfortable being and learning from the Word of God. But eventually, you're gonna have to ask these. You're gonna have these conversations. You have to. You have to. I, in my opinion, I feel like if someone identifies and as their sexual you know identity or gender or whatever i feel like there's a greater identity to uh, to apply to i feel like like if you identify as a black person um i i feel like you can identify to a a a higher level as a child of god you know Mm -hmm. um you could identify different levels and so you could identify as a black person probably up here maybe a uh a a gamer right here Mm -hmm. not as high as cultural but then above that, your identity is in Christ. Um, mm-hmm. I, think that's, I think that's where we have to go with the gender roles, in my opinion. I can't speak on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More talk on this to, in the future to come, for sure. Let's go to our fifth and final segment, and let's end on a good note. Fate of the Furious, Fast 8, uh, hit the theaters, and it is... The the biggest it's opening good. weekend, and it just smashed one billion dollars in box office revenues. That's with a B. Billion, Billy. That's their nickname right now. That's Billy. Crazy. And so, um, 
I think it, the debut is at 539 million. It topped out Star Wars The Force Awakens at 528 million, so it's about 10 million over that. And it's on track to be the highest grossing uh, movie. And I don't feel like it took them that much to make that movie. <laughs> Which is crazy. I think the most expensive thing was probably, spoiler, the submarine. Spoiler warning! The submarine that just pops out of there. Yo, that submarine, that submarine scene. That scene was, I think Fate, Fate of the Eight was like probably the best one. Yeah, I, I think. The best. Fast Five and Fate of the Eight. Fate of I the love Furious. Tokyo Drift. There was real driving in Tokyo Drift. Yeah, it is. I mean. You remember in the scene where he's learning how to drift and he's on that pier? Yep. And yep. those two Asian people are there talking. Do you know who that is? No. The old people. Yeah. Like, they're fishing. Okay. That was the actual, like, Drift King once upon a time. Oh, really? Yeah, like, he's, like, a well-known... You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a little Bow Wow with his little Hulk. Like, you know Hulk. what I'm talking about, right? Oh, when yeah, he's, like, I know, yeah. There, they're, like, and they're, they're like, just fishing. Then, they're, yeah. then when he finally learns, yeah, man. That's really cool. He's, like... And they were running through tires and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. It, it made crazy. That, see, that movie... See, that's an example of a movie that really affects who you are. Like, that made me want to buy a Mitsubishi Lancer. Uh-huh. Right? That made me want to drop the car. I'm not going to lie. That movie probably... Help me really, really, really want force. That's what I'm like, saying. Bip, 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 bip. And then I under- started to understand how cars work and they don't have 27 gears. <laughs> like how Fast and Furious makes you think where they just shift forever. <laughs> and he's going and watch not- Fast and Furious, the first one again, and count how much times it shows you the scene where it's like, do do, do do, and they're just, just shifting. <laughs> it's going to show that scene at least nine times. He's in like ninth gear. Here's, here's, okay, here, here's the effect of movies in my life, okay? That made me want to dive into more cars and like start a love for cars. Mm-hmm. And it made me want to drink Coronas. You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. Corona? Coronas. Because in, in the first Fast and Furious movie, uh, Brian O'Connor goes to Vin Diesel's house after he saved him or, or whatever. And then he says, uh, you could have any beer you want as long as it's a Corona. It's on me. And so he, and he gives them a Corona and I'm like... Corona's my favorite beer. And I was like 15. I was 15 at that time. You're an idiot. <laughs> no. Nope. And I, it's still my favorite beer right that now. That never, that, I don't think I, I've ever look, been Look, it worked on me. The marketing hit me hard. And now, because of that movie, that is the reason why I love Corona Extra. And that is the reason why we're going to have to stop this right but here. You, <laughs> you, but you just said that started the, the, the car thing for you. What do you mean? That movie got you interested in cars, right? Well, that, Midnight Club. Okay. D- but it's a... Co- What's it need for speed? Okay, it's the combination of all of it, though. Yeah. So... But you saw one thing and was officially in love I, with Corona. Okay, fine. It, so that it makes took no me, sense. It took me less than it took you, but... For you, that's that's what it is now. I'm in love with Coronas now. <laughs> it's just I just thought Vin Diesel was the coolest person. I was like, not a sponsor. But <laughs> I love Vin Diesel, man. He talks in all prolific one-liners through the whole series. It's, ridi- it's ridiculous. Family. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does, man. And he like wears his white tank top or whatever. He's mm-hmm. family. That's it, ridiculous. You know, like I mean, did he have like a new triple X? Um, I think he had a new Riddick. I'm not sure about That's what the Triple X. Yeah, is is just Riddick, and so, and he really just needs to stick to the Fast and Furious movies because those are those are awesome. I I loved it. I love how The Rock was like this unstoppable force in the movie. He was just like, ah, and he took it the was, guy. It, that was put legitimately it ridiculous. Yeah, he was he was he was that good. was legitimately yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, did, did he like rip something off in his jail cell? Yeah, and then started like. <laughs> Like yeah, working he, out with he ripped it? a concrete bench off, and he's like, "I'm the like, rock." Yo, the little the, the scene he had with the British guy and him, where they're like throwing jabs at each other, yeah, that yeah. was legitimately hilarious. Yeah, it was it's like I'm gonna bench press you. <laughs> blah 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 blah. He's like, "Yeah," and, he, and then the British guy was like, "Yeah, go ahead." Blah blah blah. He just started making fun of him yeah. for being so swole. It was funny. Yeah, uh, and they're gonna have two more films. Actually, number ten is gonna be the last. And then one. the dynamic when they're like running out. Like, the British guy's, like, sliding through, right? Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. Rock's just like... He's like... Yeah! <laughs> he smashed through a wall and stuff like that. He's grabbing people and just pushing them out the way. Swinging them around, yeah. I mean, he, was, the, he was legitimately the juggernaut in yeah. that scene. He juggernauted the scene. I was yeah. like, this... What is going on? No, I'm the juggernaut. <laughs> when they were bringing him into the jail, yeah. and the new guy yeah. was, like, threatening him, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Rock just broke... <laughs> he just broke he just his neck up. Yeah, yeah. 
he's he's the man. I love The Rock since the beginning. I, I love I love him, man. I love The Rock. I don't know. Um, so and that I mean, that's gotta be impressionable to some kid out there. It's gotta be in some way. I don't know how, but maybe I missed something. I want to be like The Rock now. Uh, maybe. And then they take a bodybuilding. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And then they do steroids. And they, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That man went through two puberties, man. Yeah, he, the way that he was looking in fate he, of the eight, it looked like he went through a third one. Yeah, seriously. He, he looked swollen. I don't know if it was the out angles. His mind, out his crazy mind, dude. It's I don't know if it was the angles muscular or. Muscular mind. Bro. This man, seriously, growth spurt three, four it's times, crazy. man. It's crazy. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that, we're going to end on that. that, that, that. <laughs> we're going to end on that one. On that swole one. On that swole note. All right. Uh, thank you guys for watching um, our little podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in the comment section below. Uh, let us know your thoughts on any one of these news channels. Actually, do you, do you have a... Do, let's, let's go back to one of our earlier segments. Do you think that video games have an effect on someone's... On an adolescent, I would say middle schooler. Uh, do you think they have a, an effect on their Let's not do that. Let's just say, do you think video games have an effect on people, period? Did you know that the biggest funeral to ever be held was in a video game? He died in a session of World of Warcraft and almost everyone on the servers met up in a general station, a general area, for his funeral. It was over a million something people. Wow. And just like that, stay safe! <laughs> Thanks for coming! <laughs> We're out of here! We're out of here, guys. Today we talk about the death of a large bunny. ISIS militants kicked by wild boars, pigs. <laughs> wild hogs. <laughs> you ever seen that movie with Eddie Murphy? When he's on the, mo the motorcycle. That wasn't Eddie Murphy, bro. That wasn't Eddie Murphy. That was who John, was that? That was John Travolta. Uh huh. That was um. There's a black guy in there. It's Eddie yeah. Murphy, bro. I don't think it's Eddie Murphy. It's Eddie Murphy. He hasn't been in a movie since Doctor Doolittle Five or whatever. Doctor Doolittle <laughs> Five. That's the only movie. Bro, if it is Martin coming, Lawrence coming to America, Mar probably Martin Lawrence. I feel like it was Eddie Murphy. I don't think so. I don't think it's Martin Lawrence either.